Okay, one of, the, um, <clears throat> one of my overseas assignments, I had two, one was Vietnam, the other one was Germany. I was stationed at a base called Bitburg in the city of Bitburg uh, in Germany. It was a place that actually um, President Reagan had gone there to visit a uh, military cemetery there in, in Bitburg. Now, I was there for three years. Um, I guess there were a couple of things that were notable about that experience. One was that when I arrived there, we had a, uh, a German civilian Adventist group who was meeting in the military chapel with our Adventist service people. Now that was not supposed to be. They were supposed to have their own church and meet in their own church. But um, somehow before I came there, we must have had, uh, we had an, an Adventist serviceman who was instrumental in allowing, somehow gaining permission for them to meet in the chapel. Well, my boss told me when I got there, he said, um, Jim, he said, one of the things that you're gonna have to do before you leave is to, to get the German congregation out of the chapel. He said, as, as long as you're here, they can stay. But the English Adventist services must take priority over the German services. Um, so we had this German and, and, and English uh, worship service every Sabbath. Um, we had a couple of people who could do translation. A German fellow um, could do the translations, very fluent in English. And we had an Air Force doctor who was a pediatrician who was fluent in German who could do the translation. So every Sabbath we translated the sermons and everything we translated, the prayers and everything that we did. Um, we sang some hymns in German, we sang some hymns in, in English. Um, <clears throat> had a very, really rich experience. Uh, once a month we'd have a potluck, and in fact we, we taught the German people what a potluck was. <laughs> we would go to a nice park um, near uh, Bitburg, and uh, they would bring their food and we would bring our food. And uh, of course the first time we had it, they all gathered around their food, they were gonna share it. And then, so we had to explain them what a potluck was. And after that then we were sharing our foods and we'd go around the table and select, you know, what we wanted to eat. But they were very, very nice to us and very kind, very understanding, very nice to work with. Um, I had one, <laughs> one kind of critical experience. That was the German elder who did the translation, <clears throat> who was an elder in their congregation, believed that after communion, what was left over should be given to the poor. And of course, in our church manual, it says that the, the bread and the wine that you pray over uh, either has to be disposed of in some way. Um, so after the first communion service, and I was going to dispose of this, and he got very upset, very angry. And he said, no, he said, you can't throw this food out. You need to give this to the poor. So to keep peace, I acceded to him for that first time. Ever after that, I measured out <laughs> what we use for communion so that if there was any left over, it was just a very little bit and I wasn't going to make bones about it. And it was so little that he didn't make a fuss about it either. <clears throat> So that was, but learning to deal with people in a different culture is quite a learning experience. Um, we had um, services, we had Sabbath school and service and uh, worship services every Sabbath. Um, had one experience where we had an exercise, a military exercise that ran into the weekend. Usually, <coughs> 
the inspectors don't want to work on the weekend either. So they try to end these things before the weekend. But this time it happened to run over on Sabbath. So um, I, I spoke to my boss, the head chaplain, who was a full colonel, and said to him, um, I, you know, I'd like to be, to, a, to have my Adventist services on Sabbath. And uh, if possible, I'd like not to take part in exercise on Sabbath. Um, I suppose I, I could have in the sense of ministry, but my ministry would have been fake ministry. You, you simulate doing religious rites for the dead and the wounded who must who assimilated casualties. And that, I didn't feel too, you know, too at, at ease with that. So um, he said to me, he said, Jim, he said, you know, he said, you, you, you do more on this base than any of the other chaplains. I was holding two worship services and I was the, in charge of all the Protestant funds and several other things I was doing. He said, I tell you what, you just put on your uniform, you stay in the base chapel. We had two chapels. One chapel was near the, um, near the flight line and one chapel was on the base side. And he and all the action took place near the flight line. So he said, you just stay in the base chapel. And he said, I'll call you if I need you. <clears throat> and he never called me. Um, so I, that was the only really somewhat quasi-critical Sabbath incident that I had there um, in Germany. <clears throat> um, we had a NATO exercise, and uh, which meant my boss asked me to go to Norway with a flight of F-15 uh, fighter jets to be the chaplain for that group up there in Norway. <coughs> so we, um, the pilots of course flew their planes. The rest of us support people had to fly there in a C-130, which is a, a four engine prop plane. And so um, we took off from Bitburg and flew to, um, I forget the name of the base in Norway, but we landed in a snowstorm. And uh, there were these mounds when I got <laughs> there. <laughs> what I discovered it was for two weeks, I was there for a month. Um, two weeks, the snow melted and everything was green, was beautiful, this was in February. And I discovered that those mounds were actually, um, oh, what do they call them? They, anyway, they're covers, concrete covers for fighter planes. And uh, that's where the Norwegians kept their fighter jets uh, to protect them from attack. And, um, but it was, it was a wonderful, rich experience. Um, it was a place called Buda, Norway, B-O-D-O, -O, but they pronounce it Buda. Um, and we, st we were able to stay, they housed us in the um, Scandinavian Airlines Hotel, SAS Hotel it was called. So um, we lived in, in quite luxurious <laughs> surroundings during those four weeks. Um, I didn't have any services, but I did spend a lot of time visiting the people uh, who were um, fixing the plane. So they were flying all day and almost all night. Um, joint exercises with the other NATO nations. Um, but that, that was a rich experience to be there in a foreign country. I got to walk around Buddha and see some of the shops, buy a few things for my family to, to take home. And um, so I, I can say I've been to Norway. <laughs> um, I did have uh, two worship services while I was in Germany. I had a general Protestant service on Sunday mornings. Actually, um, um, it was, we call it a contemporary service because we used the newer music, uh, gospel type music that was coming into being during that time. And in the afternoon I had a gospel service. And uh, this was a, um, a worship for the black military people. And we had uh, one or two uh, people, uh, Caucasians, who would attend the service too. But we had a, um, an army sergeant who was a Church of Christ minister. I forget where he was stationed. 
but about once every two months or so, we would have him come up and preach because I didn't really preach the way they liked preaching to be, but he did. <laughs> and um, he kind of roared and stomped his feet and, you know, got the people all excited. And they, um, they loved that. They feel that the spirit was working. And one of them actually accused me of quenching the spirit because I didn't do that when I got up. Um, but one of the, the wives of our um, servicemen, who was, um, was a German lady, uh, came on Sunday one afternoon when he was preaching. And uh, she was scared to death. She said, I'm never coming back here when he's preaching again. She said, I was scared of him. And she hadn't seen anything like that. Because <laughs> we were all used to it, part of our culture. But uh, that was something new for her. Um, had another young man who, who was not an Adventist. Uh, he worked in finance. And um, something happened when he went home one afternoon. Um, something his wife said or did made him very angry. And he took a pot of beans that was on the stove and threw them on the wall and the curtains and really plastered up the place with the beans. And she called the police. And so the, um, the German police came and of course they referred it to the, the guy's commander. And uh, so the commander talked to me about it. We one had a good relationship. And so I said I would, you know, I would talk to the troop and uh, that I thought this was a one-time thing and we could prevent it from happening again to keep him from getting, losing stripes and, and getting punished seriously. So I went and sat, sat down and talked with him at his desk and uh, talked with him about his relationship with his wife. And his comment was, um, she made me mad. And I said, I said, um, no, I said, Remember this, she didn't make you mad, you got mad. I said, getting mad and what you did after you got mad is your responsibility. The commander's not gonna punish your wife for throwing beans on the, you know, and, and whatever she did, you're the one who's gonna get punished. I said, so it's your responsibility. And he said, you know, he said, I never thought of it that way. Um, so, you know, that was, a, a good experience for me, but I felt like I had really changed this fellow's perspective about his responsibility as a husband and his responsibility as a person for the expression of his own emotions. And uh, so far as I know, he didn't get into any more trouble while, while he was there. Um, I, I want to go back to the relationship that we had with the German people. Um, Every, about once a month, maybe once every two months, um, as many of our Adventist servicemen as was possible, and several of German churches would all get together and have a big celebration on Sabbath, have a worship service with translation, have a potluck, and, um, and have a big time. Uh, <clears throat> and so those were, those were big days. And um, we, you know, it, our relationship was very warm and uh, very close. Um, and uh, we loved it, they loved it, and we just looked forward to getting together every month or so um, in this kind of, of celebration. We had several Adventist services that were going on there in Germany. Uh, one was at a place called Wiesbaden. Um, another one was at an airbase. I can't remember the na name of the airbase now. But one of my jobs being an Adventist chaplain was to visit these companies from time to time and um, give them support, preach for them, and uh, see in what ways I could help them. So I would see them about once a month. I would travel had to travel about 100 miles to where, 100 or 150 miles. One, one of them met in Frankfurt, which was a big city, 
And we had a, a large group there, probably of 75 to 100 service people that, that met there. We have what's called um, uh, religious leaders who are designated by the General Conference to be like a company leader here in the States, to, to be the leader for our Adventist groups. And these people then are, are authorized by their base to take offerings that go into the Protestant fund, but that are used for the expenses of the, of the Adventist group. And um, so my job as Adventist chaplain is to go visit these groups and support these Adventist lay leaders in their leadership of, of these groups. And uh, they always appreciated that and had a good time going to, to visit them. I always carried my family. We had three girls and a little boy now, and um, we drive in our Volkswagen bus all over Germany. Um, one of the rich experiences was every year we had a retreat in Germany for our Adventist servicemen. And the first, for many years, as a place called Berchtesgaden, which was a place high up in the mountains, was a place that Hitler used for a retreat center. And um, so we would gather, we, there was a nice chapel there and a lot, of, um, a lot of historical places that we could visit. And we would have like a weekend of spiritual retreat meetings. And usually someone came from the States uh, to do the preaching. I got to do the preaching once well, in the three years that I was there. <clears throat> um, and the Adventist servicemen came from England, from Italy, uh, from other parts of Germany um, to, to meet once a year. And um, this is something that we, we do both for our Adventist service people and for our Adventist chaplains. Uh, every year our Adventist chaplains have a, a conference, a professional conference, and all the Adventist military chaplains get together once a year to, um, to be spiritually enriched and to be professionally enriched. <clears throat> um, what else happened in Germany? Um, I think that's, that's about it for Germany. <laughs> but it was, it was a good three years. And um, the best part about it was it wasn't like Vietnam. I got to take my family. And we spent three years there together. <laughs>